Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to a video that examines the advocacy for apprenticeship workplace learning and also critiques the apprenticeship model of learning. We will begin with the analysis questions and then move on to look at why some people support apprenticeship training and then look at the drawbacks of apprenticeship training. Finally, we'll wrap up with a few synthesis questions. There is only one analysis question for this video. How should organizations prepare to appeal to apprenticeship learners? I understand that many of you may believe that the apprenticeship approach is used solely for trades, but this isn't necessarily true. Providing a mentor is becoming increasingly popular outside of trades. Mentorship, internships, and work-study programs all borrow from the traditional apprenticeship model. It's important to understand that employers do not help with training apprenticeship out of the goodness of their hearts. These figures speak to the bottom line. Employee turnout can be costly. These organizations believe they are more competitive and their workers are more productive. As you can see on this slide, hiring apprenticeship creates goodwill in the community and increases employee morale. This may be for both the apprentice and for those who are helping with the training. Finally, apprentices, once they graduate, have the skills and knowledge to make the company an even stronger competitor. Let's begin by looking at some of the pros of apprenticeship training. Supporters of the apprenticeship model believe that practical experience in addition to attending vocational training provides learners with hands-on experience needed to support what was learned in the classroom and also puts a valuable job experience on the resume. This is paying the dues, so there may be no need to apply for entry-level position jobs upon graduation. Vocational schools have skilled teachers who are masters in their field. Their years of experience and their pedagogical skills help make learning insightful and often fun. This knowledge goes beyond book learning and lectures, and they can provide hands-on practical knowledge through demonstration and experiential learning. Some people may see earning a low wage in a negative light but apprentices are getting paid to learn. The low wage while learning will be offset by earning much higher wages after the apprenticeship is complete. Tied to earning some money, apprentices may not carry as much debt when they complete their programs because of the offset wage. Finally, examinations are available in 56 trades in the National Red Seal program. Passing the exam leads to provincial recognition of skills and knowledge. Additionally, it also provides a formal learning aspect for apprenticeship training. Apprentices' wages are often low, with some or just above minimum wage. For mature students, this often curtails them from retraining through apprenticeship programs because they cannot support their family or other expenses. Related to that is the financial commitment of attending a vocational school. Similar to university experience, the learner must pay tuition and purchase learning materials, such as textbooks and perhaps specialized tools of the trade. Apprenticeship training involves a very steep learning curve and likely includes learning skills that the learner didn't associate with trades, such as math proficiency and good reading and writing skills. Updating or expanding these skills while learning the trade is often a daunting task and the learners are not prepared for. It may take time to master a skill and often the learning process begins with doing tasks that seem redundant or below the learner's skill level or appears to have little to do with the job. This means starting from the bottom. This can easily discourage learners new to the trade. Outside of vocational training, apprentices often train with a company and are taught how to apply new skills. Although the person doing the teaching is an expert or master in the field, that doesn't necessarily mean the person knows how to teach. Sometimes the person is told to take on an apprentice but doesn't want to. Both situations can be disastrous for an apprentice. As with any type of education, there is no guarantee of a job at the end of the apprenticeship. Organizations do not always hire apprentices they have just trained. Some apprenticeships do not require formal post-secondary education, while other trades may require an undergrad degree before starting an apprenticeship program. A post-secondary education is more than just learning enough to pass the exam. It's about increasing social skills, learning how to learn, exploring new ideas and ways of thinking, and gaining responsibility for yourself as a learner. Apprenticeships that are not tied to formal education do not give learners this opportunity to grow and learn. While for some, earning a degree may be difficult because it goes against their natural tendencies of learning by doing, as opposed to learning by lecture or book. 
Finally, an undergrad degree will increase the cost and time put into education. This video barely scratches the surface in critiques and advocacies of apprenticeship from the learner's perspective. So our first synthesis question looks at the critique of advocacy from the perspective of the organization and community. Are apprenticeship programs valuable to either of them, and if so, how? The final two questions will focus on your place of work. Would you recommend this type of training or programs to the organization you currently work in? Why or why not? Doing an apprenticeship is not for everyone. It often requires learning in a formal setting and learning the skills through hands-on training. This combination is very difficult for many people who are often good at formal learning or hands-on learning, but not both. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the tutorial.